we had a great Sunday last Sunday with Pastor Corey Turner. And I highly encourage you that if you didn't, weren't here and couldn't hear the message, please make sure that you go to our messages on website and have a look at it because it was a very, very good word in season prophetically for our church. And it's important as a church family, you know where we are headed. But today I want to speak to you about are we keeping pace with God? Are we keeping pace with God? And I'm very aware that in the last two years, we have had some wonderful prophetic words from Pastor Corey Turner on, on, on what's on God's heart for our church. And I'm not going to read the whole prophetic words, but I'd just like to give you some snippets from last year's prophetic word at this exact time last year, and then go into what was just talked about in this last week, again, some snippets. So from last year we had, we will be an apostolic church, ascending church, a church of strategic partnerships, relational connections, and ministry networks. We were a church that not only talks about grace, but practices grace. We would be an expanding church that will celebrate five more strategic locations to minister to a changing landscape. We would have an, an, ex, an ex, sorry, we would have an expansion of influence in the coming years. There were new expressions of ministry for new seasons of ministry. And Pastor Corey highlighted from Ecclesiastes 3 that our church wouldn't be found spiritually napping, but aware and alert to the times and seasons within and without. And again, it wasn't the whole prophetic word, but that was just some of the things that, that um, I felt to highlight. And then last week, some of the snippets from Pastor Corey's word for our church word, God was wanting to do a new thing through our church. The interruptions of the previous season will give way to uninterrupted momentum, blessing and favour. It's time to build upon the past and add height to God's purposes for this church. There would be new favour with the government. A fresh wind of the Spirit would blow through us to reinvigorate passion for God's purposes. A season of stepping out in faith will be rewarded tangibly. God has called us to more and more will be added to us. God wants us to access, access more in 2022, but we have to believe for it. And you know, prophecies can have great potential and they can have great intentions. But if we, we need to make sure that we heed and do our part to what God is wanting to allowing God to work through us and do what he wants to do in us. God expects us to play our part and do something. People used to ask how I was coping. When we had COVID started last year, right at the start in March, people asked me as time went on, how are you coping with COVID and the church and that's coming, that's happened? And I said, I just let them know, to be honest, I was just so excited with as COVID hit, all the things that had changed. And I know God is up to something and I don't want to miss one part of it. I believe we're about to see a mighty move of God like I have never seen in my lifetime before. And I wasn't around when all the wonderful revivals happened and that, but I sure am here now and I'm not going to miss it for anything. And I'm excited. God is doing something different. Yes, a whole stack of things have changed in our life, but God hasn't and God's got something exciting ahead and I want to be part of it. So my question to all of you is, are we keeping pace with God? If God is saying all these wonderful things to us, are we keeping pace with what he wants to do? God is ready to move and work through us, but are we ready to do what he wants to do? So the first thing I want to talk about this morning is having a heart, have a heart to respond. I have to confess, confessions of a senior pastor, I have to confess that when COVID first hit last year and all our events and meetings stopped, I felt like I was on holiday. I know everyone else might have been having a fit about it, but I felt like I'd gone on holiday. Everyone was moaning about COVID, but I'm secretly enjoying the break. However, I was aware that as time went on, I was getting a little too used to watching church online or doing one service a day and having Sunday night off. You see, I was used to doing two morning services in the morning sometimes going out to the prison and I'd be doing four chapels in the afternoon, come back in for a night service and believing for God to move in people's lives and make a difference. 
And now I just wanted to stay home and relax. Sean and I would go out for walks Sunday afternoon and it was just wonderful. And I remember saying to him, I don't really want to go back to Sunday nights. Can you believe I'm pastor of a church and I'm saying that? But I realised that I knew I had just for me, I'm speaking to myself, not anyone else. I knew for me that I had got slack unintentionally. I had got slack in my heart and I wasn't responding for me to be part of change in people's lives. And I had to start taking steps to turn that around and be way more intentional with my time and connecting with others. And I have and I love it. And, you know, with the increased capacity spoken about for our church family and not just Sunday services, we are going to need increased help. If God's going to do all this stuff, he's going to bring all this increase, everything's happening, well, we're going to need increase in our help and how we do it. Do you have a heart to respond to God and what he's wanting to do? Do you have a heart to respond to God and what he is wanting to do. Because you see, God has so much more he wants to do in and through you. But sometimes you just don't realise what it's going to take to accomplish that thing or you don't realise how vital it is that you personally play a part. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27, it says, you are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. And it's not that you're being slack or lazy. It's you just don't realise it yet how much God and the church value what you could do or what you could bring to the table. For some, you unintentionally undervalue what God has put in your life and the abilities that he has given you. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, it is God himself who has made us what we are and has given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned that we would spend these lives in helping others. Are we keeping pace with God? Let's have a heart to respond. The second thing is, let's work together towards God's promises. Let's work together towards God's promises. One of the very challenging things for us in life is to stop thinking with our human timing and limits and to choose to move or to sink in with God's pace and timing. God has made many wonderful promises to us in life, some of which are very clear for him from his word, the Bible, and others are just, he's spoken to us, just in our spirit. It's like we just know and we just know that's God and God has been speaking to us. In Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 4, and Pastor Corey Turner referred to this, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. We all have a tendency to be waiting for God's promises rather than working towards those promises. I'll say that again. We all have a tendency to be waiting for God's promises rather than working towards his promises. The rewards at the end are determined by our commitment to the process of reaching those rewards. The rewards at the end are determined by our commitment to the process of reaching those rewards. Some of God's promises are unconditional. He just says he's going to do something and he acts upon it and does it. But most of God's promises are conditional. If you do this, then I will do that. Just for example, in Chronicles 7 verse 14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And there's many promises like that. We can't do and be a church properly without you. And we don't want to. We can't do and be a church properly without you. And we don't want to. When you understand that we, the church, are God's body, 
you'll realise that we are his only form of expression. He chooses to work through us. He chooses to work through me. He chooses to work through you. What a responsibility and a privilege that is. And if we are going to keep with God's pace and there's so much more he wants to do through us, we have all got to get on deck with this. But it's going to take everyone to do their part. I'm just going to highlight one area of our church that ends up making a huge difference to the whole bigger picture. Now, there's many areas, but I just chose this one. You may not feel that kids' life, our children's ministry, is your thing. Well, God values children and I want to value who and what God values. So me saying that kids' ministry isn't my thing is like saying I'm not into what God values. Just saying. However... If you look at any church or organisation that has a great children's ministry with plenty of volunteers, it grows so quickly because families attract families. So let me put this to you. If you volunteer to do Kids Life once every six weeks only, whether you're a parent or not, you don't have to be a parent, that would amount to only, only two times per term. How easy is that? We would probably end up, if the whole church got behind it, we would probably end up having waiting lists just to be able to help. And then once the parents are happy that their children are happy, they're free to help in other areas. And then once children are happy, they invite their friends along and they tell all their friends how great our kids' life is. And so all their friends want to come and we all know that parents will do whatever it takes to keep their children happy. And the churches grow because we've got a great kids ministry. When we don't focus and give that priority, things hold up, just food for thought. Do you wanna see our church grow and have the ability to impact people's lives for good? Perhaps it's time to think about getting involved in kids' life. As I said, once every six weeks only, two times a term, do it easy. And there's other areas, I'm just, I'm just picking one for fun. But you know, whatever the ministry is, if we get a mindset that someone else will do it, we're not working towards God's promises and keeping with his pace. I've heard older people around my age say, oh, look, I've done my share of of helping and doing different things. I'll let the younger ones do it. And I'm like, you're kidding. When, When did we get a retirement on helping people? That's not God's heart. I want to be someone who when I'm 80, 95, everyone's going, oh my gosh, Linda Stanton's such a goer. She's just always out there helping. She just never lets anyone stop her. I think of Thelma Atwell. What a goer she is. And there's so many other wonderful people in our church. I want to be an example for the younger people to follow, not go into retirement because I've done it all the other years. And I love it. I love helping. I love serving. I love the privilege of being able to place honour and value on people. I never want to stop doing it. In Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4, it says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. Perhaps you don't physically come to a church service, but you are part of our valued church online. You're part of our online campus. Then you could get in touch with our pastoral care ministry and find areas that perhaps you could help practically to make a difference in people's lives. There are also many other areas that you could help in, as well as in our Canberra community, even though you don't physically come to church on Sunday. So it's just wonderful that we all have an opportunity to get on, get in the, up to the pace that God is working at. Are we keeping pace with God? Let's have a heart to respond and let's, ha- and let's work together towards God's promises. The final thing is, let's come from a position of surrender. You may be going through something right now and helping out is the last thing on your mind. You have questions, you've got hurts, you've got disappointments, you've got unrealised expectations. And to be honest, for some of you, you're angry at God. And I've seen people hold their hands up and clench their fists at God because they're so angry. Why have you done this? Why didn't you come through in prayer for me? Why, why, why? I've also seen people hold their hands up in trembling because they fear at the future. What's going to happen? They don't know what's going to happen. 
and they don't have that assurance and that, that peace from God and they're fearful and that's very understandable. We have a pastor friend that we caught up recently on our holiday who has motor neuron disease. And he used, to have, he used to be a pastor of a very thriving church and he was on staff at many other bigger churches. And about nine years ago, approximately, I might have the years that wrong, he found out that he had this dreadful disease. And he and his wife went through nearly a three-year period of anger, of grief, tears, you name it, with many questions for God. But they didn't give up on God. And I'm sure he's one person we would not judge if he had shook his fists or clenched them at God. Why are you doing this? Yet he's come through his valley and God has used him in the most amazing way to minister to these guys with motor neuron disease and that who are navigating it. And naturally speaking, he should have died seven years ago. And even when he got it, they were, you know, his wife was like, well, I've probably only got about two years left. But he is still full of life. Has he been healed yet? Not yet, but he's got such a ministry. And he said that even though he saw so many wonderful things happen as, as he's pastoring a church, so many wonderful, wonderful things in God, nothing compares to how special it is for him to be able to minister to those alongside him with the disease. And his wife is in constant contact with the wives even after their husbands died. Who would have ever thought God would use them like this? You see, God doesn't mind if you shake your fist, clench and shake your fist at him. He doesn't mind if you get angry with him or hold them up trembling in fear. But as you journey with him, it is wonderful when we can take our hands from clenched fists or trembling and turn them out in surrender to say, God, what do you want to do with me? How do you want to work with me? What have you got in mind for my next season? And that doesn't happen overnight. But as you continue on your journey with God, you do go from this, hopefully to this. And God can use you in amazing ways. Are we keeping pace with God? In Psalm 126 verses 5 to 6, it says, Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Whatever you're facing, ask God to use you in your situation now. God, whose life can I make better through you using me? Who can I encourage? Who can I come alongside with? If you're still alive, you're watching this, God's not done with you yet. So don't give up on him because he certainly hasn't given up on you. I love Philippians 1 verse 6. It says, being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So if our church is going to have one heart in seeing God's purposes fulfilled in and through us, then we need to make sure that we are keeping pace with God himself, with whom nothing is impossible. He wants to take us on a journey that leads us to higher altitudes, higher than we've ever dreamed that we could go. Do you have a heart to respond to God, to work together towards God's promises and to come from a position of surrender? It means moving at a different pace, God's pace. In Ephesians 3 verses 20 to 21, this is a scripture I so love. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that has worked within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, God's not interested in making you feel guilty about your past. He's interested in taking you forward to the exciting destiny that he's always had planned for you, to give you a future and a hope and to build a close and loving relationship with him. Out of that relationship with him, God wants the overflow of your life to touch others for good and make a difference. 
When the world wanted to leave God out of the picture and do their own thing, which works against how God created us, something or someone had to pay that price for people's sins because God had regretted that he had made us. And in God's incredible love, he sent his son Jesus to live among us and show us exactly what the father heart of God is like. From a baby born in a manger to being brutally crucified on the cross to pay the cost with his own blood. To be resurrected and brought to life again, Jesus always had you on his heart. And today I want to give you an opportunity to ask for his forgiveness and ask him into your life. You know, your mistakes, no matter how big and messed up they may seem, are never greater than God's love that he has for you and the grace he extends for you. Give God an opportunity to show you what he's really like, not the religious rituals or legalistic standards you, standards you may have learned when you were younger, that you've heard or experienced earlier in your life. God is so much more. He has always planned for you to experience his goodness, not just in this life, but in eternity. <music> 